Aloha and welcome to Hawaii Rotary People of Action. I'm Beth Ann Kozlovich, your substitute host for today. And with me is our district governor, Winton Shoneman, who's usually in this seat. <laughs> and this time we're turning the tables on you a little bit, Win, and it's delightful to see you and to be able to talk to you about Rotary. You know, it's wonderful to be here. Uh, we're getting towards the end of the Rotary year, which goes from the uh, beginning of July to the end of June. And so there's a lot of things going on still, but we are getting ready to wrap it up. So uh, there's, uh, there's two sides of the conversation in my own mind. One is the, the melancholy, uh, uh, I'm a little sad about it. The other is that it's exciting to see what's just around the corner. So let's talk a little bit about both sides of that conversation. First of all, how are you feeling? Here we are, this part of the year. Yes, you're coming into nearing the end of your year, but how are you feeling about what you've been able to do this year and, and how you've seen Rotary evolve over your time as district governor. Well, you know, Rotary is, is, is such an amazing organization and I've had such great opportunities to, uh, to travel our state and uh, travel throughout the West Coast. Uh, it has been immensely fulfilling to be able to connect with people that are just doing such fantastic work. And the other side of it is, is that um, I did come in with such uh, uh, immense dreams and, and such huge goals that it's obvious <laughs> that I'm not going to get them all done at this point in time. But the Rotary is, um, is not just about one segment one year. Uh, it is about a, a sense of continuity over, over time and, and really about making a difference. So I will have great opportunities to um, make the difference, make the change that I, that I want to do, that I, that I see as possible within Rotary. To make that change, though, you need a lot of other people. And meeting with the presidents, meeting with all the other clubs, I know you were making the rounds. That's how you and I first met, because uh -huh. this is my first year in Rotary, although I'm a legacy because of my mother. <laughs> yeah. And fulfilling a long, long promise. But as you were talking with the presidents, who I understand recently met, and I think we've got a picture of everybody who was up at uh, Kilauea Camp. Yes, do we have that military camp? There we go. Yeah, beautiful. So there are all the presidents from the various different clubs from across Hawaii. How did that meeting go, and what is it that you think that you were able to impart to them? So as, as Rotarians, we meet several times during the course of the year both to plan and to share resources and to talk about the things that are going on and, and the impact that we're having uh, in our communities, both globally and locally. Uh, that particular training session or meeting session, uh, I, I asked our presidents to meet away from the daily challenges that they face, family, business, uh, community, and that kind of stuff, and really come together to discuss uh, the things that uh, are going on in Rotary, going on in our community, and how we can uh, maximize our efforts for a greater impact. So what uh, do you think came out of that, that that would make a difference, not only in how you leave your legacy, but what everyone makes forward? So one of the things that we, came, we, we talked about and came up with is it's truly a focus this year on uh, the efforts of human trafficking or to, to fight human trafficking. I call them free, freedom fighters. Uh, to say that you're, you're working on human trafficking is, is one thing that both scares people and intrigues people. So that was one of the great things that came out of the meeting is a, uh, a coordinated effort across the state to educate ourselves about the issue of commercial sexual exploitation of children, human traffic globally, um, and all of those uh, conversations that we have around the subject. Uh, we did a marvelous job with that during the course of the year. I think we probably educated close to 2,000 people uh, about the issue. Uh, some clubs have taken uh, steps towards uh, uh, working with community partners to uh, uh, become freedom finders. Uh, we had a great uh, uh, march here in downtown Honolulu uh, with 400, 500 participants uh, to call attention uh, for our legislators uh, and community action people uh, on the issue. Um, out of that also came uh, a friendship bond, if you will, 
uh, you know, one of the things we think about rotary off times as being all about work and, and no play. And, and one of the things that came out of that was just a real sense of, of camaraderie, a sense of, uh, of uh, caring about each other uh, and doing things together. So that was particularly eh, one of those chicken skin kind of things, right? I think that's one of the most lovely things that I've discovered about Rotary, which I saw in the years that my mother was involved and when she was president, that it was a lot more than just doing work projects. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really a wonderful reason to come together to better a community and to work on something that has great meaning. But in so doing, forging friendships that last well beyond a project or well beyond a particular need. And to see, especially in our small community, that's a very important thing because we have so much work to do, not just with this particular project, which is incredibly weighty and important, but how that fits into all of our needs for our families and our children. It's, it's such an important thing that we do. It is. I have a, a great story. Um, Ayman L. DeCockney is a, is a good friend of mine. He uh, has been a Rotarian for a long time. And, and he came to Hawaii via uh, New York. He was originally from Alexandria, Egypt, but came to Hawaii and knew no one. Uh, and so and he was starting a new business and, and that kind of stuff and had an experience with his family in, in Rotary prior to. Uh, in Alexandria, Egypt, and he joined Rotary here in Hawaii so that he had community around him. Uh, he knew the value of friendships and, and the opportunities to uh, just be connected. Um, one of my uh, things that in, in reading and, and educating myself about uh, community uh, action organizations is that millennials in particular, because they're so connected electronically, one of the things that they crave is the opportunity to connect personally. And so they're more engaged in evening activities than uh, any previous generation. And uh, Rotary is a great place for millennials to connect in a different way as I, well. I think we're seeing that in a lot of ways. I, I saw a study recently about millennials not wanting to do speed dating or, yeah. you know, fast food, but really learning the value of what takes time to produce. And that means a good relationship or a good meal. And the fact that Rotary can provide both on occasion yes. is a very, very good thing. So as now you're looking at a very big activity that's coming up for all of us, the district conference is going to be in not too long from now, in the middle couple of, of May, a couple of weeks. And knowing that we're going to have some wonderful speakers there that are now open to the public that everyone mm -hmm. can come and attend. So it's not just for Rotarians, you can come too. And knowing that this is a very, you know, sort of not exactly the centerpiece of your year, but it certainly is one that culminates a lot of the activity. How are you feeling about the conference? I'm excited for the conference. I mean, just truly excited because not only it is, is it uh, a way for us to celebrate the things that we've done, it's also an opportunity for us to continue to grow as Rotarians and individuals. Uh, and my vision uh, uh, for the conference and, and working with the conference team was to really, so our Rotary theme for the year is be the inspiration from our Rotary International President, Barry Rassen. But and you I, had also a different um, slice of that, I know. When we were beginning to talk about the district conference, there was something very important to you that we focus on peace. Yeah, so, so I wanted to meld the overarching goal of Rotary, which is to create a more peaceful world, with the theme of Be the Inspiration. And so um, our theme for the conference is Inspiring Peace. Um, we have some wonderful keynote speakers, Brian Rush from the Human Thread Foundation. Uh, on Saturday during the daytime, uh, there is an opportunity to engage in a TED-style talk. Yes, we're calling them wind talks, we're talking as in worthy information <laughs> now, not yeah. just about you. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> and so we have Pono Shim, we have Puanani Burgess, we have uh, uh, Ian Kitajima, Kita good friend of mine. I'm, I'm so excited for him to come uh, and talk about his, his way of innovating uh, thinking and the way, how can we innovate uh, to create a more peaceful world? Uh, so from his technology background, that's an amazing opportunity. Uh, we, we have uh, some folks from Ho'olanapua, which is our partner on human trafficking, uh, 
uh, to talk about uh, how uh, fighting for freedom creates a more peaceful world uh, and those, kind of, uh, those, those issues. Although it's funny, when we talk about fighting to be able to create peace, as opposed to seriously advocating for, advocating the yeah, yeah. advocating is 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 one step, but yeah. there does come a, a point where we need to uh, take action and uh, you know uh, and really be one to stop say stop this is unacceptable in our society. Um, we could go on and, and make this a conversation <laughs> of, about human trafficking, but I don't want to do that. Our our um, our logo. I'm, I'm excited. For, our logo is yeah. is is interesting in that it is uh, an origami peace dove, if I, you will. I, I love that, and I think we're going to put it up and, there so and that you can have a look at it. Peace dove, in my mind, symbolizes in the folds the the combining of our of our various cultures, both in Rotary and in our own community, but the coming together in intricacies to uh, uh, reflect our society and our differences in coming together as one in both peace and hope. Uh, so if you look at the symbolism of origami and the the opportunities there. Uh, to me, it, it, it is kind of uh, fun to think about and, and talk about. And it's such a, a lovely piece that I was even thinking if we could turn it into a little piece of jewelry and something <laughs> that we could keep with us that goes far beyond the conference. But in all seriousness, you know, being able to take some of those concepts and seeing how we apply them in different ways now and the opportunities that we have both here at home and when we are away from Hawaii and how we bring some of what we know about living in Hawaii to other parts of the country and other parts mm -hmm. of the world that need to hear this message so much, especially through the, the rotary you know, conduits that we have being a worldwide organization. So how has this filtered into what's happening beyond Hawaii and, and beyond the mainland? Well, first of all, I, wanna, I do want to say that the, the, the concepts and the, the conversations that we have um, about in, during the peace conference is something that that I will look to apply in in my daily life. Uh, it's it's not just to, to about having a conversation and hearing a good speaker, but taking that away and applying it personally, professionally, and you know in my relationships with family, friends, and in the global community. So truly excited about that. Um, we were talking uh, uh, a few minutes earlier, and one of the things uh, uh, about millennials and that kind of stuff, we're, we're looking at how we apply uh, passion and connecting it with impact. And so we are uh, in the process of developing a new Rotary Club. All right, well, on that note, let's go to a quick break, and we'll have something very exciting to talk about when we come back. Wonderful. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Evening. And we are back with Hawaii Rotary People of Action and delighted to be talking to District Governor Winton Shoneman, who usually is sitting in my seat, <laughs> but I am subbing for Janet Sheffler. So we are here together talking about something that's pretty exciting as we're melding passion for Rotary with also issues-driven passion. How is that turning up in Rotary Clubs? So as um, most Rotary Clubs um, are focused on a variety of areas um, have very diverse groups of people with very diverse passions. And so um, we go and um, address one issue here and one issue there. And I, during, my course, during the course of the year as my travels 
throughout the district mm. and having talked with people. One of the things that we uh, tend to gravitate towards is how can we have greater impact in our communities? And so it occurred to me that, that if we take our resources and uh, respond to a specific issue and focus those resources on those, that issue, whether it be during a time period or in this case, building a Rotary Club around a specific issue that will be with us for many years. So the issue is the environment and sustainability. It is not something that is going to be uh, solved uh, immediately, but it is something that needs constant attention to. So we're building the Eco Rotary Club of Kaka'ako. Uh, it's meeting at SALT in, uh, uh, at the uh, Revolution, Revolution there you go. <laughs> Solar Offices uh, upstairs on, on Wednesday evenings at 6 right now. But uh, they ha it has attracted a significant group of people. Many of them tend to be in the millennial generation or somewhere there, thereof, where their passion and, and what they see in the world um, is different from my generation. Um, so they will be addressing issues of environment and sustainability. They are incredibly ambitious and incredibly creative. One of the conversations that they're having right now is how can we do a beach cleanup in Kalaupapa on Molokai? How do we, how do, we do that rather than just going to our Ala Moana our Beach Park, Park right. or someplace close by? <clears throat> they have great plans. How can we address the, the issue of the garbage patch in the middle of the, of the Pacific? Or how can we build a community garden? in the Kaka'ako area where most of the, the, the living now is becoming high rises. So I am incredibly excited about this group of young people uh, that are coming together uh, with passion and uh, looking to maximize their impact in, in our communities. It also strikes me that this kind of a rotary club might very well be a model for others where people want to gather around a specific issue and it may, in fact, be something that is going to slowly change how Rotary may be delivered in future. It could be. And there, there's room for, for variety. Rotary is an, is an organization to, that, to me, over the years, has demonstrated flexibility in, in the way that they approach things. We're not locked into it has to be one specific way and has been very open, if, you, if, if I don't mind saying so, to, to change and to growing in a way that meets the needs of Rotarians rather than meeting the needs of uh, a board or meeting the needs of uh, uh, corporate structure and, and that kind of stuff. So well, I'm we, particularly excited about that. We often hear a phrase, you know, change or die. That's not exactly what we're talking about with this, but the idea of having that flexibility and the need to move into a different way of being to be able to create sustainability and to be responsive to an ever-changing world. This world is not the same as it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago for some people who got into Rotary you know, 30 or 50 years ago, clearly very different. And so looking at Rotary's growth and its ability to respond seems to be rooted in the idea of flexibility that's now being seen in how the Echo Rotary Club is being formed. One of, the, one of the things that that requires, though, is that we listen to our members. Um, and it's something that requires a specific skill, requires <laughs> a, a continuous process of reinforcing that in our club presidents, in our district governors, in our Rotary International uh, uh, leadership. And, and I'm happy to say that our Rotary International leadership at the top at the bottom, depending upon how you look at the triangle, Rotary International leadership is very good at listening to what it is that we want and then striving to meet those, those actions. Uh, the Council on Legislation met just recently, and one of the actions that they took was to elevate our uh, Rotaract clubs to uh, on par with our Rotary clubs and make them partners rather than a subset of a Rotary Club or responsive to a Rotary Club, a true partnership. And I, I'm really excited for that.
So how will that show up for those involved with Rotaract? What will they feel as a difference? Well, it's, it's, it's not determined yet how that will be rolled out. The idea that Rotaract clubs don't belong to a Rotary club anymore, but are a true partner in paints an image to me that we will be working more together, that they will have greater independence. They are not to work for us, but that we have a respect for them as a, an organization of their own, um, and that we work together for the greater good, um, that we mentor young people uh, till they become Rotarians, and that uh, uh, the Rotaract clubs themselves assume greater responsibility for the leadership of their own organizations. That means that districts like ours will be providing more training, will providing more opportunity, uh, and, and we'll really, uh, we're, we're having conversations at the district level about how we integrate Rotaract into our district board. Having that vitality of younger people who are involved with Rotary, albeit you know, as younger people and those not out of you know, high school yet, that's really important. You know, having some of that happen, I've seen some of the, you know, the clubs that were started for, for high schools and how they interact, but it was much more of the mentorship, feeling that there's a sense of self-direction and agency that they will have now seems to also mean that not only are we creating a pipeline for Rotary, but also that we're developing the skills for many other issues of, through Rotaract in school, and that's a really important issue for all of us. And it's exciting for me to see them look at the world in terms of having ownership for things that are going on, rather than looking at a previous generation and going, you know, this, you, well, not just your <laughs> fault, but whatever it is, this, this is what you, fix it. that yeah. you, you created. Yeah. But looking at it and going, you know what, I am empowered to take action. I am empowered to, to be the solution rather than, mm. all, than looking to others. So I'm excited for that aspect of it as well. Me too. Uh, I, can't, I can't wait to see what happens with that. I know my mother helped to start a Rotaract Club a while ago, and that was a very important thing to her because young people, to be able to bring them not only into Rotary, but into life and to be able to have good solution-oriented you know, thinking skills and critical thinking skills and also working well with other people who care deeply about the same issues is a very important thing for all of us to help to build as we build community and we talk about building community. But before we have to go away and say goodbye, I want to ask you about how you feel about saying goodbye to your time as district governor and, and what it is that you'd like to leave us with as your legacy and what you feel you're personally taking away. You know, uh, this year has been incredibly satisfying, um, a lot of growth for me personally. Um, in what ways? Well, just in, in, in my, my relationships and my friendships, um, the, way that, uh, uh, the way that I see the world. You know, I mean, one of the things that, that uh, <clears throat> we were talking about with the assistant governors the other day was some of our district conference thing, and I had to learn to listen a little bit differently. To, to, to hear what it is that they were saying. And so there's a lot of personal growth for me. And, and I look back on that and I go, you know what, the outcome of that is, is truly, um, it brings tears to my eyes, I don't even want to think about it. I'm going to start crying here right now. Um, but there's nothing the, wrong with that actually, the, but the, I understand the legacy The legacy of this year will be that, um, that we had an impact on human trafficking, and we'll never know the people that we, we had an impact on, but um, they, they are out there. Uh, if, if we save one life, uh, we save one person. Uh, if we have one more person engaged in the conversation and the solution, then we've done our job. That's so. sort of the starfish story. Yeah. You might not be able to save <laughs> all of us, but you throw one back throw in. One and back and a lot and to that one. Exactly. And, and that is a, a good way of looking at it, too. One more that's saved, one more that can be yeah. secured for moving forward and who may save somebody else, too. So finally, though, what is it that you'd like all of us to remember about this year? If you could sort of give us a, a benediction of sorts, what would it be? Uh. I, I think if, if I could leave you with, with one thing, is that it takes us all. 
you know, it's, it's not the district governor, it's not any one, un, one individual, but that we as Rotarians, we are that piece of, we are that folded in together, and, and together uh, we have such an impact, not just locally, but, but globally. And uh, I'm looking forward to the coming year. Uh, the 2020 Rotary International Convention will be here. And I'm looking forward to, to really the opportunity to continue the work uh, that we've started. Well, I'm looking forward to all of that. It's been a pleasure to have the chance to get to know you this year and to have uh, the opportunity to speak with you today. And I'm also looking forward to going to the conference, which is May 17 through 19, and you can still get all kinds of tickets, either piecemeal for the whole thing. The prices will go up as of May 1. So do go to the Rotary District 5000 website and click on conference, and you'll be able to get your tickets to go as well. And the speakers will be fabulous. It'll be time well spent and time spent Thank together, you. whether you're a Rotary yeah, whether you're involved with Rotary now as a Rotarian, whether you're thinking about it, whether you're just interested in some of these wonderful speakers, it is an opportunity for you to hear them. And it's not uh, necessarily going to be one that will be replicable again because this group of people will only be there together this one time for the 17th or the 19th of May at the Rotary Conference. I am Beth Ann Kozlovich. It's been a delight to be with you, Wynn. Thank you so much. To sub for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been and, fun. This has gone been by fun. very quickly. Very thank quickly. you very much. Thank you to Think Tech Hawaii for hosting us. That's right. Thank you, Think Tech. Thanks to all of you. I'm Beth Ann Kozlovich, signing off for Hawaii Rotary People of Action.